Now, at this point in time, I think it's become painfully obvious that people out there like Bob Iger and the Disney board are intentionally destroying the pop culture icons that we all grew up with, as well as the famous tales that Disney created and let alone, you know, other franchises that have been so embedded in pop culture that now Disney is trying to really strip down. We have Things like uh, and the Alien franchise, we have things out there like Planet of the Apes that are now in Disney's possession. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. And let's get right into exactly what's going on with Bob Iger and a major plan slash strategy that was cancelled by Bob Iger for specifically Snow White. Now we know that this is a specific project that has been going through a lot of major issues, not just because of Bob Iger and the Disney board, but let's face it, it also is all rooted down to the top shareholders of Disney. All right, Cough Cough, Black Rock, and Vanguard. Now we know that there's a lot of problems to discuss when it comes to Disney and that the bigger picture has a lot to do with the shareholders. More on that a little bit later. But focusing on what Bob Iger recently did for Snow White and how a major plan was canceled for this movie just goes to show you how they have little to no confidence about Snow White 2024 and exactly what's going around when it comes with this major franchise that they're trying to set up. So let's get into all of this. Now, we know that D23 is ahead of us and will be displayed within the first couple of days of September. However, with Snow White 24 in the hot seat right now for the Disney board and Bob Iger, however, one significant development surrounding Snow White has to do with how Bob Iger just canceled a Snow White plan behind closed doors. The plan that Iger and the board agreed to cancel had to do with a planned announcement of two Snow White prequel movies centering on the Seven Dwarfs and the Evil Queen while celebrating 100 years of Disney. They are also canceling out a whole presentation of the Seven Dwarfs actors that were set to appear on stage at D23, presenting themselves as the new modern take on the Seven Dwarfs. The initial plan was to have the entire cast, including both Rachel and Gal, along with Andrew Burnap, who plays the new basic, you know, prince, of course, if you want to even call him that, called Jonathan, on stage. However, Disney is now no longer allowing the seven actors of the Seven Dwarves to make an appearance on stage anymore to present this movie and, of course, the actual film's trailer, nor are they having them represent the film entirely at the event. The cancellation of Snow White's plan gets even worse than that of what Bob Iger greenlit, such as an entire post credit scene reportedly getting cut from the Snow White movie that featured the Seven Dwarfs to set up the said pre Equal movie. So let me just stop here quick before I get to the next major development is that the fact that they went as far to cancel an entire presentation of the seven actors portraying these new seven dwarves on stage at D23 is massive. It goes to show you that they've realized that the backlash is so strong and so significant that they really can't back themselves out of this. So what do they do? Well, Bob Iger did just that. He literally is no longer allowing these seven actors to present themselves on stage at D23 to present the up and coming Snow White 2024 trailer that they want to get out there around September 9th. All right, now we know that D23 right now is going to be a major event and it's sold out. They're celebrating 100 years at Disney still for 2023. And that just goes to show you how much of a disaster Snow White really has become. The fact that they have to bail out a lot of the people representing this movie, including the Seven Dwarfs and the actors who portray them. But it's not just that. They're not going to be allowed to engage in many interviews for Snow White 2024 throughout, of course, the remainder of this year leading into January and February of 2024. Even post-release interviews, they're not going to be allowed to do that. So that just goes to show you that they have this whole system to tame the backlash and to reduce any kind of heat from the general public. It's not going to work. They could try whatever they want to try. It's not going to reduce the backlash as long as you have 
these new seven dwarves in this movie. That's just the flat out truth. Now moving onwards here, this is where things get even worse, is that the plan was at the tail end of the credits, the seven dwarves were going to present themselves in a special scene with captions, stating that the dwarves will return four years before Snow White. The idea of teasing this prequel movie was immediately cancelled just not too long ago, and pulled from the final cut, as the prequel movie is no longer happening. Iger also cancelled an entire strategy for Snow White 2024, where a mid credit scene was also going to, to actually be displayed for the film featuring a tease of the sequel where both Jonathan and Snow White are about to face a new foe that was actually described to be a brand new villain appearing in the Snow White sequel based of course on Happily Ever After to be a brand new villain appearing in Snow White for a sequel based on another iteration of Snow White's story. The mid credit scene was also pulled from the film as plans for a Snow White cinematic universe failed. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this. We talked about this two days ago. Bob Iger, all right? We knew that Bob Iger wanted to create the Snow White universe just as much as they are trying to make a Lion King cinematic universe. And that just goes to show you how much it really failed. Now, we know that everything related to this, the fact that they wanted to create a new villain in the Snow White sequel and how it was going to be based on the villain from an iteration of Snow White called Happily Ever After. In fact, I don't know if you guys ever saw that animated tale. It's quite dark. I do recall that there's moments where characters get turned into stone. Uh, there's a villain in there called Lord Malice, I believe he's called. So they wanted to take that villain and throw him into the sequel. Now the sequel is still in the works, mind you, but those two prequel tr prequel movies are canceled. It's no, no longer happening. They also canceled out any mid-credits or post credit scenes from teasing the sequel and or the prequel movies of Clementiana as well as The Seven Dwarfs. So, once again, we know that there's a lot of things happening right now with Snow White. The fact that they really want to provide a different tale for the sequel, focusing on Lord Malice and kind of giving that spin on things should be, you know, interesting to see because I think it's just going to fail terribly. But overall, I don't believe that we're going to get a sequel in the long run. Uh, we know that Halle Bailey has stated that she's not quite sure about what's going on with the Little Mermaid sequel, uh, but there are discussions happening between Disney and the board. They are moving forward with that. They're doubling down on that. They want to actually expand on the animated tale of Little Mermaid 2 to present that in the form of live action. I believe that the sequels of Snow White and The Little Mermaid are gonna get the Aladdin treatment because we already know that Mina Masoud has really been very open that Aladdin 2 is very much unlikely right now. So looking at everything here, guys, I would love to hear your take on things below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel and I will catch you guys next time.